Joseph was the Messiah of Egypt and Egypt only. Just like Jesus is the Messiah in Islam and Islam only. If you wanted to be saved by Joseph, it didn't matter who you were. You had to come to Egypt. Joseph was the Messiah of another land than where he was from. Just like Jesus is the Messiah of another nation than his own. Oh, it's the truth. It didn't matter your status. It didn't matter if you was Jacob. It didn't matter if you were the patriarchs. You had to come to Egypt. You had to come to another nation. And Joseph is Jesus in the types of and shadows. Now Beersheba is southern Israel. And that's where Jacob was. He had to go all the way to Egypt to get some corn. What is that going into? Joseph being the man with corn. Joseph saving the world with corn. That is a picture of Jesus being the Messiah in the Quran. Get it? Corn, Quran, corn. Jesus is the Messiah in the Quran and the Quran alone. Now, Jesus is coming back as a just ruler. As a ruler. Not God. Joseph was a ruler. He was second in command. He was up under Pharaoh. And Jesus and Paul is in the same predicament today. Now the church has failed to realize that BKA, Potiphar, BKA, Holofernes, BKA, Pharaoh, are all types and shadows of Paul. The wolf in sheep clothing. The man with the fur. A picture of him is seen in the story of Jacob and Esau. When Jacob tricked his own father with the fur. This is a picture of Paul. And Esau is going into prophet Esau. It was Paul who stole the birthright of his brother, the prophet Isa. I want Hud, Aya 120. And each story we relate to you from the news of the messengers is that by which we make firm your heart. And there has come to you in this the truth and an instruction and reminder for the believers. Now this is the proof that the types and shadows are accurate, spot on. You're going to learn for sure with no doubts that Jesus is Joseph in the types and shadows and that Paul is the wolf. Now, when I started teaching that Paul was the wolf in sheep clothing, I was unaware of the wolf revelation in the Quran. Although I've already been teaching that. I've been teaching that Paul is the wolf. I've been teaching that Paul is the murderer of Jesus on biblical record. I've been teaching that Paul was the thief from the tribe of Benjamin. And I had no clue that this is all clearly seen in the Quran. This is Joseph. Aya 3. We relate to you. Oh, Muhammad, the best of stories and what we have revealed to you of this Quran, although you were before it among the unaware. I was unaware of this truth when I was in the Israelite camps. I had to learn this truth right here at home in the house of David. And let me tell you something. We are light years ahead of the Christian church. We are light years ahead of these Israelite camps. We have the truth 
that just like Joseph was falsely murdered, it's the same thing with the prophet Isa. He was falsely murdered. Yosef, Ayah, seven, certainly were there in Joseph and his brothers signs for those who ask. There is a sign in the story of Joseph. Now, think about it. Why was Jesus born supernaturally? Why? Why? Because Jesus is Joseph. And if Joseph would have been the real father of Jesus, then basically Jesus is his own daddy. Jesus being born supernaturally is proof that he is not God. It is proof that he is not his own daddy like the Israelite camps teach. They teach that Joseph was the father of Jesus. That's a lie. God had to give Jesus a supernatural birth so that when you follow the types and shadows, you'll see that Jesus is Joseph in the types and shadows. And if Joseph would have been the father, then basically you saying that Jesus is his own daddy. And a lot of this goes right over your head. Come back to it and meditate on it. Now, I'm going to be coming out of Yosef. All of my ayahs is going to be out of Joseph. Ayah 9. Kill Joseph or cast him out to another land. The countenance of your father or your attention will then be only for you. And you will be after that a righteous people. You can repent after. So his brothers was going to kill him or cast him out. And then Jacob would give them all of their attention. And they would be righteous and repent later. Now, this is what Christianity teaches, okay? Paul teaches that by the death of one man, we are all made righteous. Now, the Pharisees believe this way. Caiaphas believed this way. He said it is sufficient that one man would die for the nation. Now, this was the belief of the Israelites of their day. Even John the Baptist said, here is the lamb which take away the sins of the world. They were always bent on the sons bearing the iniquity of their fathers. That was the belief system of Jesus' day. So by killing Joseph or casting him away, the patriarchs assumed they would be righteous. Just like the Pharisees of Jesus' day, they believed they would be righteous by one man dying for them. Now I have Yosef, Ayah 13. Jacob said, indeed, it saddens me that you should take him. And I fear that a wolf would eat him while you are of him unaware. They said if a wolf should eat him while we are with him, a strong clan, indeed, we would then be losers. Now, I had to go through a lot of scriptures, through the types and shadows to discover that Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing who murdered Jesus. But the Quran is clear. It tells you plainly that Joseph was eaten by a wolf. That was the lie that was perpetrated upon him. And there's some truth to that and there's some falsehood to that. And the truth of the matter is Paul murdered Jesus. Okay, the wolf did. But Allah raised him to himself. Now let's keep going. And they came to their father at night weeping. They said, oh, our father, indeed, we went racing each other and left Joseph with our possessions. And a wolf ate him. But you would not believe us, even if we were truthful. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. Meditate on that. 
false blood. Everything about the Christian church is established on false blood communion. False blood, the forgiveness of sins is false blood coming from the false garment. Who is that? Your boy Paul. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. Jacob said, rather, your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting. And Allah is the one sought for help against that which you describe. And there came a company of travelers. Then they sent their water drawer and he let down his bucket. He said, good news. Here is a boy. And they concealed him, taking him as merchandise. And Allah was knowing of what they did. So in the Quran, we see that Joseph knew that he would be a witness against them. Just like the prophet Isa knows that he will be a witness against all of you who associate him with God and say that he died for your sins. And according to the Bible, it was the Ishmaelites who rescued Joseph. Just like it's the Ishmaelites today who know what really happened to the prophet Isa. It's like an unsolved mystery. It's like what really happened? On 9-11. What really happened to the prophet Isa? The church doesn't really know. They don't. The nation that knows what really happened to the prophet Isa is the nation of Ishmael and that religion is Islam. Let's go back to Ayah 19 because there was something important that was skipped. And it says, he said, Good news. Now, I just told you, and you can verify it in the Bible, that the Ishmaelites rescued Joseph. So this means we have the good news. We have good news for the Muslim, and we have bad news for the Christians. The good news is that Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslim. And the bad news is that Christians will have a witness against them. Who is that witness that will witness against the Christians? That witness is none other than Jesus. We call him the prophet Isa. He's going to testify against you for associating him with God. Now, that's good news. That's the good news. Oh, that's where the good news went. I was wondering where was the good news in the Gospels. And the good news in the Gospels is you need to go and spell. <laughs> you need to go and spell. Get it? Gospel? <laughs> go spell? <laughs> you need to learn about the fur. You need to learn about the corn. What can you spell in corn? The Quran. <laughs> Joseph has saved the world with corn and it's the prophet Isa. He is in the Quran and he will come to the rescue of the Muslim in the last day. Yes, he will. He will destroy the cross, the Antichrist. The truth about Jesus is in the Quran. You need to go spell. There's good news in the Gospels. And that is Jesus. He is the Messiah of the Muslim and the Muslims alone. All right, so now let's do a recap. We've already brought out that Paul is the wolf. Now, the Quran is the clear book. It literally says a wolf ate Joseph. That was the lie. Now, in the Bible, it doesn't say it was a wolf. It says it was an evil beast. And that is seen in Genesis 37 and 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, some evil beast have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dream. Verse 33. And he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. So we have two stories 
and they're both the same but a little different. In the Quran, the prophet Jacob knew something was fishy. But in the Bible, it appears that Jacob was deceived. Ayah 23. And she, in whose house he was, sought to seduce him. She closed the doors and said, Come, you. He said, I seek the refuge of Allah. Indeed, he, her husband, Al-Aziz, is my master, who has made good my residence. Indeed, wrongdoers will not succeed. Ayah 24. And she certainly determined to seduce him. And he would have inclined to her had he not seen the proof of his Lord that is going into the sign. And thus it was that we should avert from him evil and immorality. Indeed, he was of our chosen servants. And they both raced to the door. And she tore his shirt from the back and they found her husband at the door she said what is the recompense of one who intended evil for your wife but that he be imprisoned or a painful punishment Joseph said it was she who sought to seduce me and a witness from her family testified if his shirt is torn from the front then she has told the truth and he is of the liars. But if his shirt is torn from the back, then she has lied and he is of the truthful. So when he, her husband, saw his shirt torn from the back, he said, indeed, it is of your woman's plan. Indeed, your plan is great vehement. Joseph, ignore this. And my wife asks forgiveness for your sins. Indeed, you were of the sinful. And women in the city said, The wife of Al-Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave boy. He has impassioned her with love. Indeed, we see her to be in clear error. So, in the Quran, this is Al-Aziz's wife. In the Bible, it is Potiphar's wife. And I teach that Potiphar's wife is the Christian church. And the Christian church is all over Jesus. They all over him. And Jesus doesn't want to have anything to do with the Christian church. He's only interested in one religion. And that religion is Islam. And we see the same thing with Joseph. Joseph doesn't want to have anything to do with Potiphar's wife. Now, I keep telling you, Joseph and Jesus is one in the same. Now, let's go to the Bible account. And I want to go to Genesis chapter 39, verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, pause. Don't the Bible say that Jesus was about his father's business? Okay? Joseph is a picture of Jesus. How many times do I got to tell you? How many times do I got to show you? Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within and she caught him by his garment now his garment is Paul Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing she was saying lie with me and he left his garment in her hand now this is proof that the church don't have Jesus just like Potiphar's wife didn't have Joseph all she had was his garment, and that's the exact same thing with the church. All the church has is Paul. So he left the garment in her hand and fled and got him out. 
Verse 13, and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. Now, this is proof that the church still has Paul right now, to this day, until the last day. This will continue to go on. The church will only have Paul, Paul, and that's all. Verse 15, and it came to pass when he heard that I had lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me, that's Paul, and fled and got him out because Allah took him alive. Joseph fleeing away, Joseph fleeing away from Potiphar's wife is a picture of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking Jesus alive into the heavens. All right, he got out, he got out of there. He was out at 5,000. <laughs> Verse 16. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. So this woman was sleeping with the garment. That's Paul, okay? All the church has is Paul. Now, you got to understand, Jesus was a slave boy. He was a servant of servants. Not only was he a servant to God, but he was a servant to Paul. Okay, he was the armor bearer for Saul. Just like David in the Old Testament was an armor bearer for King Saul. Now, just like David was in the house of Saul, it's the same thing with Jesus. He is in the house of Saul. And one day he's going to break the yoke. And he's going to completely get away from the house of Saul. And he will be a warrior against the house of Saul. Everything that you see in the story of David and Saul is the same thing you see in the story of Jesus and the apostate Paul. It's the same thing you see in Joseph and the story of Potiphar, okay? Joseph got out of there and Jesus got out of there and David, he got out of King Saul's house. He got completely away from his house, okay? Everything that you see is nothing new. Everything that have been is the same thing you see right now, okay? There's nothing new under the sun. Everything that is is because it already happened before in a type and a shadow. So I encourage you to study. Study the stories of David. Study the stories of King Saul. You'll see the same exact thing. David being a part of King Saul's house and then David being an enemy towards King Saul's house, okay? That's exactly the same thing that Jesus is doing with Paul. He's an enemy against the house of Paul. Now I want to keep going. I told you that Paul was the wolf. But Paul is also the thief that Jesus warned about. According to the Gospel of John, the thief was the wolf. And Paul is the wolf, and Paul is the thief. Now, let's go to Ayah 70. So when he had furnished them with their supplies, he put the gold measuring bowl into the bag of his brother. This is Benjamin. Then an announcer called out, O caravan! Indeed, you are thieves. The cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Now, this is in both accounts, the Bible and the Quran. Benjamin was the thief. And according to the Bible, Paul is from the tribe of Benjamin. Now, Jesus not only warned us about a wolf, but also about a thief. And I told you, Paul was both the wolf and the the thief. Now, let's get some scriptures connecting Paul with the garment. Okay? And then we'll come back to Paul being a thief. But I want to deal with Paul 
being the false garment, being the wolf in sheep clothing. Now this is going to be Acts 758. And cast him out of the city and stone him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Now clothes in the Webster's 1828 dictionary. This is the Bible dictionary app. Okay. Clothes is garments. Okay, so what are the odds of a garment being laid down at the feet of Paul? Because Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing. Now, there was a man by the name of Joshua, whose name in Hebrew is Joshua. In Greek, it's Jesus. This is a type and shadow of Jesus. Wake up. And this Joshua was in trouble with God. He was in trouble with God because one of his men stole something. Now think of the prophet Esau. He is the Messiah. And most of you have no clue what it means to be the Messiah. The Messiah is the man who has to come back and clean up this mess that Paul left. Okay, now Joshua was getting yelled at by God. God was angry with Joshua because of one of his men. And it's the same thing with the prophet Esau. God Almighty was angered at the prophet Esau because of what Paul has done. And that's why the Quran is the clear book. It reads 5, 1, 16. It reads, and on judgment day, Allah will say, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you ever ask the people to worship you and your mother as gods? Besides Allah, he will answer, glory be to you. How could I ever say what I had no right to say? If I had said such a thing, you would have certainly known it. You know what's hidden within me, but I do not know what is hidden within you. Indeed, you alone are the knower of all unseen. I never told them anything except what you ordered me to say. Worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. And I was witness over them as long as I remained among them. But when you took me, you were the witness and you are a witness over all things. If you punish them, they belong to you after all. But if you forgive them, you surely are the almighty, all wise. That's what Jesus said. Let's start off in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men. Three, six, three, six, three, six. And smote of them. I'm going to read that again. And smote of them. Thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shabarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord. Oh, oh, I didn't know Jesus prayed like that. Oh, oh, I know people that pray like that. <laughs> Until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas. Okay, he said, Allah. 
Did you know Joshua was the third person in the Bible to say alas? He said alas, O Lord God. Oh, so we have a picture of Joshua saying, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, wow, this is deep. Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turn up their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do unto thy great name? So Joshua is praying, complaining. He's praying, but complaining at the same time. Verse 10, and the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? The Lord said, get up. Get up. Stop all that crying. Hush, hush all that. Get up. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Nowhere in the Bible God ever told anyone who was praying to get up. See, that's why the Bible says God is not a man, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. Okay? Sons of men repent and right here in your Bible I have a story of a man by the name of Joshua in Hebrew it's Jesus Joshua say man okay and he is repenting to the almighty God I serve a great God that if he wanted he could destroy Christ and if he wanted he could destroy his mother. I serve the all-powerful God. What about you? Verse 11. Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, key word, stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. So the man that supposedly died for everybody's sins is being confronted by an angry God that is saying, there's sin in the camp. In other words, I'm paraphrasing, there's sin in your church. There is sin in your church. Jesus didn't die for your sins. That's a lie. Going on. Verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. So God Almighty told Jesus, okay, let me say Jesus, Joshua, Joshua, okay, this is the same. He told him, look, if you don't clean up this mess, if you don't go and destroy this cross, I ain't going to be with you. That's the kind of God I serve, man. Y'all need to wake up. Jacob, wake up. Wake up. All right. Share this truth. Share this truth right here in the house of David. Going on. In the morning, therefore. Up. Verse 13. Up. Sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord take of shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord. And because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning. 
and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah. There's sin in the camp of Judah. There's sin in the camp of Judah. There's sin in the camp of Judah. There's sin in the camp. There is sin in your church that Jesus did not cover. Wake up. Verse 17. And he brought the family of Judah. And he took the family of the Zahites. And he brought the family of the Zahites. Man by man. And Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household. Man by man. And Akon. Oh, I'm locked up. They won't let me out. This is a picture of your boy Paul, the jailer. He was locking up the Christians, okay? This is the man whom the prophet Agabus came to with the belt and said the Holy Spirit is going to bind you up, okay? He said there's a jail waiting for you with your name on it, Bulas in the Arabic tongue. Okay, and Bulas, for those who don't know, is a prison in hell whom the prophet Muhammad told us about in the Hadiths that there is a prison in hell, okay, named in the Arabic tongue Bulas, which means Paul. There is a prison waiting for you with your name on it. And this is confirmed in the scriptures, in the book of Acts. Going on, Akon, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah. And that was his sin, the son. His sin was the son. Always talking about the son, the son, the son, the son, the son. That was his sin, okay? The son, that's your sin right now. The son, going on, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Akon, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Remember I told you in the Quran, what did Jesus say? He said, glory be to you. Glory be to you. Now this is a picture of what Christianity has done. God has commanded the prophet Isa to destroy the Christian church. And when he descends amongst us as a just ruler, the first thing he will destroy is the cross, which is the heartbeat of the Christian church. Wake up. Wake up. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel. And make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua. And said indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils. A goodly Babylonish garment. I told you. This is Paul. This is the wolf in sheep clothing. And the 200 shekels of silver and the wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. This is going into the lie, okay, about Jesus being God, about Jesus dying for your sins, okay. This is a lie that's been hid. Now, the Christian world, including the Israelites, they are behind. They haven't caught up yet. Their Bible knowledge is so whack. They don't understand yet that Paul is a wolf in sheep clothing and that there is something he did that nobody really knows about. Okay, he is the root cause of all the evil in the Christian church. And he is the reason why Jesus has to come back and die. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, his church, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. Silver represents betrayal, okay? Your boy Saul, 
was the real Judas, okay? And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his son and his daughters and his oxen and his asses. Now his asses is going into the Arabs that converted into Christianity. Okay. And his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them out unto the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, why has thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. See, Paul was the true troubler of Israel. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. So Paul is the man who set his church on fire. Okay, just like Jephthah, he set his own daughter on fire. Why? Because he had no son to sacrifice. Just like Paul, he couldn't sacrifice Jesus. Allah took him. So what did he sacrifice? Oh, he sacrificed his own church. The Christian church is the fuel for the fire. And Allah will give every Muslim, a Jew and a Christian, and he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. Okay? Wake up. Wake up, Jacob. Wake up and see that Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing. Wake up and see that Joseph started off an Israelite, but he ended up an Egyptian. Jesus started off in the religion of Moses, but he ended up a Muslim, okay? This is the truth. This is the truth. Now, Joseph saving the world with corn is going into Jesus being the Messiah in the Quran. You can't get him no other way. You got to come and see the man with the corn, okay? You have to come home to Islam in order to receive the Messiah. Okay, the Quran tells you that the Jews and the Christians, the people of the scripture, will only believe in Jesus before his death. In other words, they haven't believed in him yet. They won't believe in Jesus until after his death. So you can't get Jesus in that New Testament. No, you can't. God is saving the world through the Quran. Okay, Joseph has the corn. Come to Egypt, come to Hagar, <laughs> and receive the corn. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.